Y'all ready? And now bring this meeting to order. Call to order. And do we have a quorum? Two, three. Yes. Yes, we do. Good. Okay. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Okay. So moved. Right. I have a second. I second. Thank you. All right. And we'll go down to information discussion items. We got a vote on The first one is from Keith Alpine Beautiful. I talked to Adelina today. And oh, can we just get a, a vote on the yeah. approval? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Rushing ahead here. Um, all in favor of approval of the last, me uh, last meeting you meeting's it. minutes. <laughs> Raise your right it. hand. You gotta get a first and second. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you got it sick. Okay, I'm sorry. We got that. <laughs> okay. No have, a vote, have a vote, please. Raise your right hand. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to you. Thank you. All right. All right. Now we'll go to this uh, uh, Keep Out by Beautiful. I talked to uh, Adelina. The tire scrap will be on third, uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, they're going to try to have it where you can just drive in, drop off your tires, and drive on out without blocking any other traffic. Um, I think it's just 10 per vehicle that you can have. And so that will be happening on Friday and Saturday. The tree care, care workshop is over. So they planted two trees. <laughs> it's done. B says discuss the results from the parks usage and information improvement survey. TK is online, it looks like. Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you all? Very well. Hey. Good. So do you want to take over and give us a synopsis on this? Sure. So let's start with the survey um, that went out to all city residents. Um, so that survey was completed, I think, by 86 people. And we got a lot of responses. The first question was, how often do you visit the parks in Alpine? And quite a few people are using the parks. The majority of people are using the parks two to three times a week. Um, the second biggest portion is once a week, and then also some percentage using it daily. And by far, the next question, which park do you visit the most? 80% um, of people use Coconut, 9% of people use Baines, and then the other ones are yeah. very small percentages, if you guys are looking at the graph. Cool. Um, getting into the rental fees, we talked about the Coconut Pavilion. So have you ever rented the Coconut Pavilion for events? 77% of people in town said no, they had not. Um, only 22% of people responded yes to that question. But when we asked if they answered yes to the above question, how long did they use the pavilion during the rental? 58% um, of people said they used it for four hours and 26% of people said they used it to, for six hours. So I would say like we were thinking about doing those um, like, you know, shifts during the day, like beginning part of the day and the end part of the day. I think that kind of fits along in the lines of what what we were thinking of, kind of breaking it down into those sections. And Darren has given me a document on that. You don't have it, but I can tell you what it says. The current policy is $25 for all day use. Mm -hmm. uh, nonprofits, I don't know if they get a discount or not. But $25, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> yes. uh, so the recommended policy going forward would be $25 from, say, 9 to 3 or 4 to 10. And those things can probably be adjusted if need be. And then for all $40 for all day. And I don't think that's too egregious at all. Yeah, the last the last question about the pavilion rental that went out on the survey, if you've rented the coconut pavilion, how do you feel about the $25 rental charge per day? And 50% of people said it was correctly priced. And 42% of people said <laughs> it, was, it was cheap. Um, only only 7% of the people said it was too expensive. So I feel like I feel like at least $25 would be fair. And I feel like the the residents wouldn't be too upset if we were to increase it slightly. Or I know we had talked about asking for that deposit. Right. Cool. Thank you. Yep. And then people um, 
just in the, the data we asked, list any ideas you have to improve the coconut pavilion or the reserva reservation rental process. There were a lot of people just putting in ideas for the parks in general. Right. Um, not, not too many of these had to do with the actual reservation process. Um, there were a few comments about having more accessible bathrooms, um, making sure the trash bins were emptied prior to dates of use, and then doing like an online app for booking. That was listed a couple times that it could be like an online thing. Um, another concern that people had was that it needed to have more like permanent tables and chairs um, because the picnic tables in the park are too heavy to move. So more seating and tables would be um, ideal. And then the next part of the survey was addressing special events in the park. Um, so the question was, what type of special events would you like to see more of at Alpine Parks? 75% um, of people, we got quite a few responses on this. The majority of people want to see music or cultural performances, um, kid-friendly activities, and food events. Um, educational and athletic events also were important, but they were le less important than the ones I previously stated. All right. Um, some of the biggest concerns for special events in the city are public safety, impact and damage to the parks, and the financial cost to the city. Um, least concern was noise, so that's good to note. <laughs> and then in order to sustainably support special events in the parks, the city is considering charging fees to event organizers. Please prioritize the following as the most desirable or least desirable. Um, so these kind of these were kind of mixed. We were talking about doing a permit fee, refundable deposit, and hourly charges. It looks like they're ranked as most desirable would be a permit fee. Next would be our um, hourly charges, and third would be the refundable deposit. To me, those graphs show that we can do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it. It really kind of looks like it doesn't make a difference. Right. right. In respect to, to the fees, yeah. And then the last section of the survey was um, about the playground equipment. So if you have children that use play equipment at the park, do you feel there's enough age appropriate equipment? 65% of people said no. Um, and so we asked what types of things would you like to see in the parks? Um, a lot of people are looking for more toddler friendly equipment, just more, more things like more climbing equipment, um, more things to climb on, kid friendly jungle gyms, splash pad was listed several times, more covered playground. Um, and just, I mean, I guess the biggest thing that I saw from all of these different people was that, that you just want more options. Okay. And I asked if they were interested in joining a biannual volunteer crew. 58% um, of people unfortunately said no, but 40% of people did say yes. Um, so we got quite a few names that we can um, keep just to start kind of making a committee to maybe go twice a year to start, you know, fixing the park, doing the painting that we talked about and all of that stuff. Oh, wow, that's quite a list too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a pretty significant list. Sure. Yeah. TK, question. Yes. Uh, and paying at the park and whatnot, why can't we invite Saul Ross to get some of the students to uh, participate in it? We did that about three or four years ago, and it was are a you, Are you talking about asking students to help maintain it, like to no, do no, the no, painting no. and stuff? Not maintain it, just spruce it up once yeah. in a while. I think that'd be a wonderful thing. And I could reach out to someone at Sol Ross to see if we could set something up um, maybe in the fall, like after students come back and you know they are situated in their classes and everything. Maybe we could do something in the fall for like a fall cleanup and they mm -hmm. could volunteer for yeah, that. That's that's what was done, like, like I said, three or four years ago. And uh, the National Guard was here also. So we invited them and they were happy to do something during the weekend. Because they're wow. bored in the hotel. Right. So I think those are some options that we might want to look at also. And it's another source of um, yeah, volunteerism. Mm -hmm. 
And all the other things. And we to tie the community to the university. What's that? I'm sorry. I was just saying, I think it's a great way to tie the university into the community. Yeah, because there's still a divide between the university and, and the city. Yes. And, you know, we've tried to get that together, and it, it was a total fiasco at first. But I think under the new uh, president, I think he'll be more acceptable to uh, getting together with the city and kind of bonding. I mean, that's the only entity that I see right now that there's still that little divide. Do either one of you have a contact at the college that you could speak with? Or should I just oh, start I, can, I can call the president. Would you? Mm -hmm. That would be great. Because that would okay. I think that's a really good idea. We, Karen, it's Megan. Hey, Megan. Oh, sorry. Yes. We actually do have a working relationship with the university. Okay. Okay. Um, with the president and with Katie Williams, who manages the student affairs. Ah, ah. Do you have a contact number for Megan? Not off the top of my head, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Megan off. Well, yeah, we'll find it out. I'm we'll, actually we'll not in my office, so <laughs> no, I we notice. <laughs> but no, I, you know, I can I can research that and get it. Thank you, Megan. But also remember, you guys are in an advisory board. Oh yes. So you can't start initiating projects. Megan, can I ask what would be the best way of going forward with like organizing a volunteer crew? Like, does how does that need to go through the city? To sit down with me and decide how we want to do this, and then I can work back with my department or the city's departments. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's do that. Well, well, what do you get back? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Actually, we'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> I may not answer the phone. I, I do have a conference tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, you're enjoying. You never warned them. You're enjoying life too much. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Okay, at the, at the end of it, it looks like that's the high schoolers' results. Yes. Yeah, so, so I got something sent to the high schoolers before school ended. I know we also wanted to talk to younger students as well. Um, but I wasn't able to get anything printed and out to the schools before the end of the school and before I left. So I would love to send a survey to younger students at the beginning of the school year. Um, but for right now, we have a result from the high schoolers. We got about 34 responses on these. So I asked them some of the similar questions. How often do you use the city parks? Um, the biggest portion here, 26% of people said rarely. The next biggest portion was once a month or once a week. So I think they are using the park less um, than some of the other residents in town. And then which park do you most frequently use? 85% of them said Coconut and 14% said Baines. And I don't think we got responses for any of the other parks. So those are definitely the most popular. Um, I asked them to rank the activities as most important and least important. So I listed basketball, swimming, soccer, walking and running. Um, sorry, I'm just zooming in here. Baseball, volleyball, and skateboarding. Um, most important was listed as walking or running. Next kind of was a tie between swimming and volleyball. Third was baseball. Fourth was basketball. Fifth was soccer. Sixth was volleyball and seventh was skateboarding. So um, it looks like skateboarding was listed as least important. Which activity do you primarily use the park for? 70% of people said mostly just to hang out with friends. 20% 20, 20 of people said they use it for exercise and 8% of people use it for playing team sports. And then which spaces are you most satisfied with? The majority of people said the open park space and the swimming pool were what they were most satisfied with. Which places could use the most improvement? 39% of people responded to basketball courts. And the next um, issue, 24% of people said the volleyball courts were their biggest area of concern. Um, and then just when they were writing what changes or improvements they would like to see, everyone would like better lighting around the basketball courts. Um, fixing the tennis court was listed several times, which I know we've already talked about in our 
previous meeting. Um, so just like a lot of improvements to the basketball court, I think was, was the biggest concern here. Wow, that's some great work. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Hey, one quick question, Megan or Gio, remind me, does Pueblo Nuevo have a basketball court envisioned? I'm not too sure. No, Maybe. I don't think they do. They have the two backstops. The, we were there, what, three weeks ago? So the okay. new park design does have a half court. A half court is going to be on the southeast. southeast yeah. Megan, will there be lighting for that? Um, I can't answer that. I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> okay. um, I don't think there is going to be lighting, though. That I don't remember that being part of the project. Okay. Mm. I think that's something we might have to look at. We might. All right. So where are we at now? I think we're on B, right? 5B? Keep, we did. Me, keep me honest. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> what we just did. We wrapped okay, up thank B, you. so we should be on C. All yeah. right, we're on C. So update from the board on individual task objectives and reassigned task needed. Uh, right, first was the park rules, which was mine. And I was discussing with uh, Garen that I have a dilemma because I want to change the, well, the hours of the parks to sunset sunrise that they would all be the same but we have no money for signage <laughs> so um, i honestly don't know what to do about that so <laughs> i would say deciding on what what the board wants would be a great start because we can at least pass it by ordinance and get the whole process started okay so just write it up and make it a resolution for the board and let them decide on what to do yeah, I would honestly take probably all of the parks ordinances oh, yeah. and workshop them together. So, I think and, you know, maybe at the next meeting, have an item where all of y'all provide input on the whole thing. Okay. Um, Thank you. Probably be good. I think I'll do that. Thank okay. you. No problem. All right. So let's go to festivals and event permitting. I do not have any updates. Okay. And that's still been struggling. Okay. Uh, rental fees. Uh, <laughs> rental fees was me. Um, so I was just going to say the, uh, there was three parts to that, um, the civic center, which we said was, I think, November, 2022, or something 2021. Right. So that was all recently, uh, updated. So nothing to do with the civic center. Uh, I spoke with Gio on the peddler's permit. He said, that's nothing we need to worry about on that either. It doesn't really fit into here. So the only one remaining is coconut pavilion in order to do something. And, um, uh, kind of like what we spoke there right now, it's $25 per day. I'm going to go ahead and make a recommendation that we would do uh, split that into 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yes, and 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. So okay. split that into two daily sections. Uh, retain that cost of $25 because I think if you said, if you look at the majority of people, they said that's cheap or right. properly priced, right. like 60% or something more than people. So majority of people will be happy with that price. And if, if they want, they're going to use it six hours or less anyway. All right. So we're really not rocking the boat at all. I don't think it's going to bring in a ton more revenue or anything else into the city, but we're not rocking the boat. And if they rent the whole day, they could get the discount to maybe 40, right? Which when we looked at inflation, the price would be around $40 since last time it was updated, I think 10, 12 years ago, something like that. But that would be my recommendation. I might just ask uh, Gio, uh, and I spoke with Gio before on this, on um, in order to just, I want to just tie that one up uh, since I'm ex officio now and not really on the board that in order to tie that up and kind of just get it complete, it needs to be an action item on the agenda. So do I need to do anything? Well, and Gio has mentioned that what they're doing with some of the other fees is they're, they're tying them into a fee schedule. Mm -hmm. So then that I think council would approve these annually. Um, so it wouldn't really necessarily have to go to you guys, you know, if fee goes up, you guys would make the recommendation kind of right. like the animal advisory. They raise the price a little bit, goes into the fee schedule and then council approves that. Um, so I guess my question for Gio would be, you mentioned we haven't, if I can get this as an action item on the next agenda, does that build it into the fee schedule that you guys are working or how do we do that? You know, the fee schedule would be kind of its own project uh, that would be established by ordinance, but the parks board or the parks ordinances rather really need a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. the, there needs to be clarification as far as 
um, opening and closing times of the parks, any rules, uh, streamlining that no alcohol or alcohol is prohibited in all parks, things of that nature. Uh, so at the same time, you know, y'all can definitely go ahead and make a recommendation as far as the pricing and the pavilion and whatnot. And I think council can go ahead and impl implement that pretty easily. But at the same time, there definitely needs to be a lot of changes in the ordinance. And part of that would be um, if y'all do want to recommend festivals and event permitting process and fees, you know, establishing it by ordinance and saying city council will update the resolution and set the fees annually by re uh, by resolution. Right. So does that make sense? It does. So I just said from my viewpoint, so I just get it as an action item on the next one, and then that's just a resolution and not the creation of the fee schedule. Yeah, I'd say that you can definitely, uh, the board can make a recommendation to increase those fees, and then we could plan from there. But I think it is um, important that we, are, or you as a board, look at the ordinance as a whole and try to make some broad recommendations on the whole ordinance too. Okay, so then if we have tacit agreement kind of on those, then... I could just work with Geo um, outside of the meeting and then create that action I'll to bring to you, Ms. Kentrell, that to get it as an action on, on, on there. Okay. Um, but I, if, if you guys had anything yet that y'all wanted to add to that, I would right. say definitely let us know. I will. I'll let and, you have an email. Karen, ahead. can I make a comment? So the pavilion rental, I don't believe, is currently in any of our ordinances. And Geo can double check, um, but correct. I don't think that's ever been set by anything. So we can actually raise it now before council without going through the ordinance and then add it when we're ready to update the ordinances as a whole. I think that sounds great. Okay. Then Megan, how does that work from our end? Does, do I just, once again, make a, uh, an action item on there and then that action item, is our re resolution involved or what comes after the action item? So what I would recommend is Parks Board recommending to council to pass a resolution to increase the current rental fee and then what the suggestion is in the structure because we don't have any formal in place. Like we don't have anything that says we charge $10 or $100. Um, and that could get us started. And then when we go through and clean up the ordinances as a whole, we can put that in the ordinance, establishing the pavilion as an actual dedicated rental spot, and then the fee to be updated annually by resolution. Okay, excellent. That sounds good. So we can take care of it now and then make it pretty, you know, down the road. <laughs> Very good. I'll ask a couple questions on that. So I know we had discussed, well, actually, so just to be clear, you're proposing 25 bucks for either 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then if you rent the whole thing, it's 40 bucks. 40 bucks for a whole day. Okay. That seems reasonable. I know we talked deposit a couple of times. What, what's our, or what's your thinking, I guess, on that currently? So uh, Mr. Yannis, he's no longer with the city, he had retired, but he had mentioned that deposit would make sense um, just because sometimes they'll leave and that oftentimes it would be it's trash, you know, that leaving something in the trash there and they require two people to actually lift the trash because it might be pretty heavy. Um, so that might be something that we could discuss. And if you guys think a deposit would be important, I guess one question I must ask Geo is for does the city have anything that requires small deposits? And then do how often are those recouped? So uh, we do require a $200 deposit for the Civic Center. That's a good example. Um, and they usually get most of the deposit back, if not all of it, as long as it's left in the same condition, nothing broken. Um, other than that, we do require a, I believe it's a $30 deposit for the pool. And that's also refundable. I mean, as long as everything's in good condition. So. And is the but, whole workflow process pretty simple as far as how they, um, like community members are used to seeing a deposit and going through the process to get recouped for that deposit? Right. So there are um, requirements, especially for the Civic Center, like you, you can't leave the lights on, you can't leave the AC on, uh, all the doors need to be locked. There's, there's a set schedule of charges. If any of those are, are not, um, don't take place, then we deduct this month that much. So it's pretty structured for the Civic Center. On the pool, it's just really, I believe, the lifeguards come in. They let uh, our administrative staff know everything was fine. They get their money back. Um, I think one thing to consider doing the split schedule, I think it's a great idea 
Um, but you know, if they trash the place, you know, and they don't pick up after, then the next um, you know, time interval might be, you know, the trash is full, we don't have staff on the weekends, things of that nature. So just something to think about. Yep. And they do have an hour between three and four, so it would require somebody. So if it was double rented, it wouldn't require somebody between three and four to come in and clean it up. Yeah, and that's where I talked about it last meeting is the fact that you know we're having to pay them time and a half to come in. Right. So whatever rental fees they have do not even come close in covering their wages. No. Right. Okay. Or the electricity. Electricity and all that. And that's why I wanted to increase it ton. You know, even though we're gonna we want the recommendations to split it. You know, half half day, you know, and half in the evening. I still think we need to raise it up a little bit to cover the cost because the city is incurring that cost, you know, and that's taxpayers' money just for a handful of people that go in there and park. Okay. So they're reaping the benefits of a taxpayer's dollar. And in all honesty, you're not going to have a lot of double rentals, in my guess, because um, people are already accustomed to single day rentals. So we're basically not raising the price at 25. So if you do think it's important to, to have a cost increase, then 25 to 30 might not be bad. You need 30, 30, and you do a 30, 30 yeah. day. And, and I'm Rick, I mean, I'd like to see it at least go to 30, nothing else. Okay. You know, it's not a whole heck of a lot. And you know, I see, I see people spend more money than that, you know, at events and stuff. So 30, 30, and then 50 for the whole day. Is that what you said? That could I, mean, be I think that's yeah. reasonable. And then plus, in addition to the deposit would be separate to the rental. So y'all want to implement the deposit? Yeah, I mean, that's it's up to the park. I mean, that's what I, I'd like to see, uh, your rental fee and then a deposit on top of that, you know, because that's what I do is we have our rental fee and then we have the deposit. If you leave the, the facilities cleaned like you found it, mm -hmm. you get it right back. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I, you know, I know that here in Alpine, um, our income is not the best, right. but still, you know, people go all out when they have a birthday party or whatever and blow yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm just being realistic. I'm not trying to, you know, I think throw a damper in. Um, do you have a dollar figure in mind? I'm figuring, you know, uh, as far as what the deposit, mm -hmm. I figured 25 bucks, you know, because it'd take probably, what, an hour and a half to clean it up if we have to call somebody out and we should have like a, a time frame in there, you know, party leaves have like an hour mm -hmm. for the cleanup folks to come in there and they can do their work without being interfered with. Otherwise you're having to go around people and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. and, I, I think that works with the time slot from nine to three and then what, four to 10, mm -hmm. giving that one hour right one hour there. Uh, I would argue that the uh, deposit probably need to be a little bit more because if it is left a mess and it takes two employees mm -hmm. to clean up within that hour before because if somebody shows up at four and the city's still cleaning up a previous mess right. you can imagine that it will come from that going i paid i put in my deposit and i'm not getting my my due mm -hmm. um but you know and i you know i see your point but also, again, if you want to get their deposit, you'd be surprised how they actually clean them. Well, that's what I'm saying and, is that uh, I, I, party one. I think the deposit would be big enough because at $25 deposit and what they're spending on the party, for them, it's like, oh, it's a $25 to leave it dirty. Just go. Yeah. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm done for right. the day. And at $50, it's, it's like saying. you're not breaking anything, but it's kind of like, well, I'd like my 50 back. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, let's, yeah. hey, everybody clean up real quick. That would be enough, right? I, I think, think so yeah. because yeah, I'd be more likely to want the fifty dollars back. Because, yeah, yeah. At twenty five, it seems almost enough to just eat it. I would say for some people, um, and at fifty, I think that that's more than enough to just. If you want, I would you think? reach out and uh, talk to Eddie over there since he'd be managing that now, and say, what would a task list be? To get it ready before the next party does and you know if it's 40 things then i'd say a higher probably definitely makes sense if it's yeah. two things lower yeah. if, if right. it's as simple as uh the track needs to be emptied and it needs to be swept and sprayed down with a hose and especially that you. makes sense but if somebody actually has to come in and right do more cleaning than that then i'd also want i I'd, I'd want to know what eddie how he would feel about having a staff member out on, on the weekend 
Uh, and if that's possible, being that you know he's super short staffed and whatnot. So. Right. But you know, that's I think that's something to consider going up 50. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. And, and for the employer to come in. Yeah. Because I don't think $50. Well, you, could, you could you can have him come in and say half a day. Okay. You know, some people want to be off Friday for half a day to go run their errands or whatever. So have that guy schedule four hours on, on Friday or, or during the week. True. And then you bring him in four hours, four on, hours the, on the weekend, the weekend on the Saturday. Right. right. And a lot of, often I think it won't even be ready for the late one. It may be, you know, you just get it ready. And it's, I think we'll have a lot of one day, half day rentals. Mm -hmm. So you won't, it would be similar to the work situation right now. So does the city currently clean after the pavilion is rented on the weekend? A good question. Right, let's be sure we're not. You know, I know charging a deposit and then creating more right, costs or by added. saying we're going to do this right. now. So There's, I I agree with that because then I, I can see people coming in and arguing. Well, you were going to come clean it anyway, right? So you're you know you're double charging me. Actually, um, we do have employees who do um or have to go out there before a party or an event to clean it for the event. So for the pavilion, right? Yes, for the pavilion because. You don't necessarily have to rent it. People will just show up to use it. And then when the event people who've actually rented it show up, um, the other party is escorted off, but then we do have to clean it. Okay. Well, I, I think that's fair then. I mean, if they're doing it anyways, that's definitely a cost. So to me, a deposit is appropriate to help help cover that. And it sounds like we do have that issue of, because I'll, and that's the other thing is you want to introduce bureaucracy if it's not a problem. But if it is an issue, we're having to go out and clean it, then that mm -hmm. seems appropriate, yeah. consistent with how we're treating the other yeah. rentals in the city. So, and it's really just more of an incentive to that they clean yeah. up. Right. 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 That's exactly. that, that would be the whole right just leave behind it. It's not, no, it's not pure. Right. It's just, yeah. 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 Being a public park, it's for the citizens to go and enjoy. So, the rail is just for the pavilion itself. Right. Okay, I just want to make sure that that I understand that because you know I hate to be out there. Then, well, you're gonna have to leave. What do you mean, leave them? You know, it's although a, it's a event public park. permitting, you know, being that other task would be more of a like you know broad events or right mm -hmm. yeah, Fourth yeah. of July, all those other things that go on out there. So currently, the process just uh, so y'all have some insight and some background on that is. If somebody wants to rent or if somebody wants to have a big event like that, we just have them fill out a pavilion form. They pay the $25 and that's it. So, yeah. you know, being that Eddie's team often sets up for those things is why right. you know, we wondered if that should be changed. There should be some more structure, rules implemented, and or fees, depending on the size. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, so that seems reasonable. 30 for half day, 50 for the full day, $50 deposit. I think so, too. And I'll follow up and get a task list um, from Eddie with more information for you guys. Before okay. next yeah. Thank you, Karen. My, my, that was a good discussion. My second point, which I think I know the answer because I bring this up every time, but if we're talking 4 to 10 p.m., you know, in, in parallel considering sunrise to sunset, I think this should would need to be one of those exceptions called out oh, in, sure. in that rule to say, you know, sunset oh, excludes rentals, Special events or you know or rentals of the yeah. pavilion, okay. or maybe change it nine to two and two to nine. Is that? Uh, it's either you do, it's either you do the exception or you make the end consistent at right. sunset. Right. And those were pulled from another city municipality, so that could be based off their open hours for their city stuff. So we can totally admit that. Sure. Yeah, because the fourth will go on, on late. Right. Certainly, we should go on. It starts early, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. D four looks like park activities. And who is that? I think you had provided us a calendar of that thing you do up to I think July or something like that. So, yes, I did at one point. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that it, it's in this packet. I believe it was in the last one. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not in this one. Is that your item? 
No. What park activity? Who is park activity? Well, uh, yes and no. But yeah, <laughs> and I'll, talk, I'll talk about it because I did get together with you. And uh, you gave me the calendar. These are the folks that, uh, or these are the events that are going on and then the rentals and whatnot. But that could pretty much change month to month. Right. Because, you know, like one month, I noticed that we have had like one activity the weekend and that was it. And that could readily change between now and then. And by park activities, I mean like birthday parties at the pavilion or other places in the park, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not like Fourth of July or no. Okay. I can read you all the section uh, on the resolution. I'm just pulling it up right now. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Okay, so park activity. Study the implementation of park activities to be held in city parks and investigate the feasibility of revenue generating activities. So I think uh, it might have been to explore the possibility of implementing more recreational side activities. Uh, and I'm not sure if anybody has that assigned. Uh, I'm not sure either. If anybody would like to take that up. Can you handle that, Andy? Would you like to take part activities? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. Now, just to clarify, are those activities that are sponsored by the city or? Um, you know, really on the resolution, it's just, I think, more exploratory than anything. So just to get any ideas or recommendations from the board. So I think it's open for interpretation at this point. Okay. Yeah. How far is it around Coconut Park? Yeah. The walking path is half a mile. Like oh, two water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not day or yeah. day on a cool day. It's like to go for a 5K. <laughs> you know, just something to do there, some some activity for the park. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people use the walking path because mm -hmm. I use it all the time. <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. All right. All right, it looks like number five is inventory of playground, and uh, TK's already done that. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you still with us, TK? Yes, can you hear me? Sorry, my internet froze for a moment. That's okay. You've already done the inventory um, of the playground, so we don't need to go. We discussed that last time. Right. Yeah, we had it in the packet. Right. The so packet. We'll move on because um, we've already discussed that and now we're discussing trying to fix it. So, <laughs> all right. It looks like D is discussion with city staff. Oh, sorry, Gio, that's yours. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Discussion with city staff regarding procedural items, questions in a recent parks and recreation related items. And just usually add that on uh, in case, you know, case. there's city staff present and the board has questions for them, et cetera. So, oh, we do have I city staff. <laughs> I do have an update, Karen. Yes, ma'am. So we did recently hire two new parks employees. So they actually not only filled a new position, but an open position. We have yet to fill the foreman position. Okay. Um, we haven't received any applications. Um, so they do now have five employees. Um, mm -hmm. and once we get a foreman, they will have six. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Megan. Okay, you're welcome. All right. It looks like it's time for Megan. With yeah. the um, so I would like for you guys to make a motion and a second before we discuss it. All right. I recommend that we make a motion to discuss action item A, which is recommend city council allocate $2,500 from the parks department budget to assist with the resurfacing of the Alpine Independent School District tennis courts. May I have a motion, please? Motion so that. May I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Oh, you can't vote when you discuss. Oh, sorry, can't vote. <laughs> Let's talk about it then. <laughs> Um, so at the last Parks Board meeting, Mr. Stevens presented the idea of helping the school district with resurfacing of the tennis courts. The tennis courts are owned by Alpine Independent School District. 
They are not technically public courts, although the public is allowed to use them outside of their normal schedule. So if the school district did have something going on, um, that would come before actual public use. He brought to the school district's attention a number of $5,000 in order to resurface them. Um, I have spoken with the superintendent in regards to this project. Of course, it sounds great, 5,000 to resurface them. Um, she is more than willing to put in the $2,500 from their end. Um, and then it was brought to you guys to put in the other 2,500. So it really would need to be a recommendation coming from the parks board to go before council to actually allocate the money. Um, we are nine months into the fiscal year. So we need to make a decision fast. Um, Allocating the money is probably the easiest part. We would have to have a formal contract with them just so you guys are aware of the full process because the property is not ours. Now, Megan, did she tell you where the school board has voted on this to go forward with it? They have not the last time we spoke. Um, she did take a, a, a few days off um, to recoup from this wonderful school year. Um, she actually was presented a kind of like an agreement with, I guess, Mr. Stevens or the organization that's helping them, um, which in return would have to have part of the city being part of to produce that other percentage. But there's not been a formal discussion as far as I believe if the school board has approved it. Mm -hmm. okay, and this may, I don't know if this is something she has to take to her school board. I don't know about the levels of funding um, and what has to be approved at the board level, level, level and what doesn't. Um, internally with the city, I could easily move the money myself, but in light of the current budget, I'd actually have to reduce a salary line item which would require me to take it before council because I can't touch salaries and overtime without an ordinance. And that is requires council approval. Yeah, I guess my question is, what if it's presented to the school board and they don't approve it, then we're stuck with $2,500 to be dedicated to the tennis courts. No, then, um, we can make a clause or something that says only upon school district approval okay, we're not yeah, even but... sure quite how it works as far as is it a reimbursement do we just cut a check um i just wanted to make sure if the parks board was really interested in doing this that we you know kind of formalize it um i pulled up the budget just to say if it was an easy move and then looking at their budget it's not an easy move um, yeah. it would have to be by ordinance to reduce the salaries because that's where their flexibility is um, from not having people hired full time for the whole year. <laughs> Megan, yeah. then when you uh, speak of reducing the uh, um, the salaries, is that a people? Is that money that has not been spent because we lost the foreman? Um, not just because we lost the foreman, but we didn't have a position filled as of October first. So it, it, this money is not earmarked to anybody that is currently working here. Correct. Okay. That, and that's charter very... charter requires me because it's specifically salaries to do it by ordinance. When we first talked about it, I was thinking, oh, this might be just an easy, you know, quick process. We sign a contract, we work it out together. Um, but then looking at their budget, they don't have the flexibility in the maintenance for parks. Hmm. And that yeah. would be where it would come out of. Right. And another question I have is when Rick uh, volunteered to, to do the construction, he wasn't uh, sworn in as an elected council person. So I'm just wondering, would that be a violation now? The charter section 301, uh, section 91, uh, or A and B, I think it is, um, that now it's his construction company that's going to do the work. Is there a conflict with him getting awarded that, that job? I can't tell you who's doing the job. Okay. That, that's not information that's been pertained to me. I know that the agreement was forwarded to me to look at to see how we would have to handle it. 
And from what I understand, Rick was just voicing the opinion of several residents in the community. Mm -hmm. That's how I took it. Yeah. And Megan, okay. what? And I think we need to make sure because I don't want us to get in trouble over that. Because you know he said that he would uh, do the work. Okay. So that means his company or he would get the money, the twenty five from us. And that's what I'm con I'm just concerned that, you know, that, that it's transparent. And, you know, if he's doing the work for half the price, well, shoot, that's fantastic for us. But I just want to make sure, you know, it's it's kosher with the charter. And well, so in my understanding, I believe it was the pickleball team that would be doing the work. Yeah. Okay. I thought he said yeah. he would provide did, the work. I did say that, didn't I? I believe yeah, if, I, if I recall correctly, he was just bringing up bringing it forward for them. Right. Okay, but they were the ones who were specifically going to do the work themselves. Yes. Okay. Well, then, then, well, they were the ones who were wanting it. Right. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. for clarification, our agreement wouldn't be with Mr. Stevens or the community residents. It would be with the school district. Okay. Right. We would be no. providing the money to the school district. I wouldn't have it allocated any other way. It's a partnership mm -hmm. with them. Um, okay. And of course, I still would have to verify if it is something we could move forward with. But I, like I said, I just really wanted to get the parks board to do a formal recommendation so that, you know, it's not, I mean, you listen to the constituents, you listen to the, you know, the people you think it's a good idea, which at the end of the last meeting, you all thought it was a wonderful idea. Um, so this is just to move the process forward. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that, that we all stay, you know, don't get in trouble on it, but if we're giving the money to the school board, now that's fantastic that way. Yes. I, I would not try to put anyone in a position where we were doing anything incorrectly. Very good. Thank you. No, I think, and then from that point, it's all on the responsibility would fall on the school then mm -hmm. right? On, on that process. Yeah. I, I think the only thing we would have to do in, with that recommendation would be to kind of clarify with the school on usage of of the uh the tennis court of the tennis court yeah. yeah because if they start implementing tennis or well yeah it, that it, way it would be painted for both sports yes and i'm going to guess that someone's going to have to draw up some rules well that's what okay. i had brought up last time that when the folks were here with rick that you have to set up a schedule right and you know they kind of looked at each other like, "Why? No, yeah. <laughs> we need to get a schedule yes. set up." Yeah, and that's and it would. Right now, I guess for them it wouldn't seem to, because the school yeah. doesn't have right a tennis or I mean, last I was there, they, they didn't seem like anybody was ever interested in that. But if it did, it'd be nice if there was something kind yeah. of yes, definitely a schedule set up that, that it didn't turn into one of those things where the school. Just takes it. Yeah. Off. Yeah. I don't want it to be a point of contention. Yeah. No. And that's on that the school, you know, that would need to be brought to school that, yeah, you guys got to get a, set, a schedule set up. It's, yeah. And it would your, your, your tennis court set up. And obviously. all it would be would be as simply as the school stating um, if they ever do have a tennis team, that they just simply state what hours they are going to use it from. Mm -hmm. Right. And that they know outside of that, that time range that anybody from the city, anybody, any public, can yes, go yeah, can go right. and use it that, that way. They did have a tennis team this year. Oh, did they? Well, then that's why that needs to be done. It's even better. Because you don't hit the ball and the ball go that way instead of going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Then I think if, if your guys are wanting a little bit more structure to it, I think I need to go back to the superintendent because I can't confer that they'll go that direction because it is their property. Right. Um, yeah. And it may not be worth trying to structure something for twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. I, I think um, if the board doesn't mind tabling the item Thank so you. that I can go back to Michelle and say, you know, some of the conversation we had um, involved actually putting a structure in place, including scheduling. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Get it all in writing. We don't want it to be a point of contention where we're continually putting out fires for the general. Yeah, and, and I think, I mean, for me personally, all I'd like to see would be the school stating being open about when they're going to use it. Right. And then everybody else can use it. At, and, yeah. and then that way the public knows outside of that time. Yeah, because it's a 50 is, 50 proposition. Yeah. So and it'd be some, something as simple as that. that. That'd be it. There's no 
anything deeper about mass or 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 just just that that the school stating when it's going to use it that way the public knows when they can go in and okay yes the school take priority of course so that, and that. that was very clear that the school would have priority okay, okay. Megan, one last thing i would mention on the contract get signed too is if this is a five thousand dollar job that turns in ten or fifteen thousand dollars who covers is that a 50 50 engagement for any overdues of the project cost um michelle and i lightly touched on that um that was not fully discussed in the original conversations with her um i did make it clear that it we wouldn't be covering any additional okay and so the sample agreement that she sent back to me um i know that she was going to have uh the school's attorneys look at it as well it, it does need some additional language put in i just think mm -hmm. clarification on that could be important i agree yeah cool. So it seems to be a lot of clarification needed. Yeah. So, so I'll make a motion to postpone it. Okay. Until we get further uh, info on it. You want to table it until next month? Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, I guess just, I mean, thinking about the schedule, I on, think we, we do. We, need... we got a motion on the floor. What? So we got a vote on the motion. Oh, okay. second the motion and vote on it. Oh, okay. And then we did discussion. Okay. Okay. So the motion is to table until next meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. Now, no, he, he did the discussion. Am I too late? Yeah, you, know, you, know, you can do it. Yeah, I guess just on the schedule. I mean, I don't know that the school is going to be able to lay it out exactly what they're anticipating. I mean, conceptually, the tennis team at most is going to practice for two hours every day and then perhaps have tournaments occasionally, mm -hmm. would be it. So, I think the public would have plenty of opportunity to. To play on there i don't think that school is going to commandeer it for too too long so i, I guess i just mentioned that i don't think the school is going to come out and say we're always going to use it between this yeah, hour and no, this I, hour. I, maybe that's not what we're looking for but no, because if we're going to partner with them you know they're not going to come and say that so this is our schedule for our tennis team right and they're only going to use it like certain time right. of the right. year so i don't think they go there because you know it's a joint venture so we have to let the public also in on it and like we do now there's nothing's going to change right that they'll still be able to access it but they got to respect the fact that the school certain times of the right. year they will be using it and of course like you said the tournaments that's yeah. the other one now because i think in in the packet there was uh, some questions on people were sure who actually owns the tennis court and so that that's kind of part of that clarification um just that way the public knows they're free to use it but also remember that it is the school's school property yeah and i think saw ross had closed theirs because they had a pickleball court there also they closed it and yeah. put a lock on the gate they actually just recently closed theirs due to vandalism yeah oh yeah. My goodness so i guess now so, we need to take a vote Right. Oh, What's that? Take the vote. Take a vote. Right. Yes. All right. Now it's on to postpone. Yes. The vote to um need a vote to uh postpone this until next meeting so we can get more clarification on schedules. All in favor? Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, but now we got a we got a motion on the floor. Oh, it's okay. That, we we don't have to go to that. Um, yeah. Okay. Good deal. That's okay. okay. Everything's okay. Promotion. Yeah. That's okay. Fantastic. All right. All right. Good. Board member comments. Thanks for the citizens for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys for working hard on your stuff and and I enjoy the spirited conversation. So yeah, and that's good. You know, we uh, we've covered. You know. We clarified some items in here. We did good, and, which is great. So that it's all on board, and uh, you know, this I guess in a long time, the first active real park sport that I've seen in quite a while. <laughs> and it's not a, a one man, two man show. We <laughs> were going crazy, but now everybody's participating in it. So kudos to that. And I should have done this at the beginning, but I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Acosta to the board's park board um, or place okay. five. Board fight. Okay. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Is that okay with you, Megan? Everything okay?
Everything's good. Good. <laughs> I wanted that seal of approval. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. I guess we can adjourn.